Good evening and a very warm welcome to the Grassroots Weekender Show. I think by now everyone knows I'm Mal Lee and this I'm is... All looking. I think you're all getting to know us now. Thank you very, very much indeed for tuning in. Um, we want to update all our viewers, all our listeners on the DXTL, Team DXTL, a run for Emily. Um, we want to give the updates, don't we, Paul, about... Yeah. Um, where we're up to, what's happening. Yeah, and who's, who's donated and how you can donate and how you can get involved. I'm not too sure about the runners now. I think we've got a great team together now, but we'll go through that in the show. Um, we're just looking forward to it. But in the meantime, the weekend, obviously, lockdown approaching. We know there's not going to be any grassroots football, so hey-ho, for another four weeks, you're going to have to put up with myself. Unfortunately, I'm not here. We've recorded this show because lockdown will be on top of us. So I'll be coming in like Joe Wicks, but I'm not dancing. It's going to be social. It's really going to be one of those where maybe talk grassroots football, maybe talk what you're sending in to me. Paul will be sending some questions, and I will get Paul like that. He'll be getting involved in this sense, ask me to read out something. So that you've got that to look forward to, and hopefully you tune in or listen in because we're also on the podcast at www.dontextheline.com. So please, whatever you do, tune in or watch us TXTL TV from the Touchlands. It's on 7pm Friday evening and it'll be scheduled for 7pm. So please tune in and get all the updates on how you can get involved. Do you know what I just thought of there? But we have, I don't know how we're going to do it when you're on your own next week. Oh... By myself, in that song, isn't it? Is it? trying to sing. Oh, <laughs> no, I'm just saying it. Joe Wicks, I think I'll take it. I think I'll take the back seat and let Paul in. Joe Wicks, take over. There we go. No dancing. But we want to try and get, yeah. you know, you, you, everyone entertained if we possibly can. You can send in some questions. You can email me, mal at untextaline.com. Add me as a friend on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, all the social network sites because we're expecting a lot more activity on social networks aren't we what we had but not as bad because the kids are still at school i think cafes are open there's a few businesses open but anyway no football and i think it's around about the second of december where we can all get together and hopefully this time that is it um, and hopefully when bonfire night comes it can wipe it all out because if it's airborne i'm sure those fireworks will kill it off and we won't have a problem one iota anyway we want to turn around and keep you updated. Um, updated, that's an understatement, that updated. We haven't, we haven't stopped. If it's not the phone, it's the email. If it's not the email, it's someone in the street. <laughs> you know, it's, just, it's been, it's been it's unbelievable, just, Paul, isn't it? I'm, not, I'm uh, surprised, to be quite honest with you. And it's great, and uh, we, we've got the team together uh, from DXTL um, who just want to run for Emily. It's just unbelievable. But where did this come from, though? Which? This. Well, why a run? Why not something? No. Well, I suppose you asked the question, a lot of viewers and a lot of listeners are going to ask, where did it all come from? How do we get around to the story? How do we get around that we're going to do a run for Emily? Well, it come, not, I probably should have filled you in a little bit more, Paul, because we know you're going to be a marathon runner with us, one of the runners, yeah, yeah, yeah. and probably carry me over the line, hopefully I'll finish it. Drag right you over the line. Yeah, that's it, that's it. At least I'm going to finish it, one, one way or another, anyway. But it came a few months ago. Um, I befriended a young girl in uh, grassroots football, um, going back a good while ago. And it's her sister, she's... She, give me all the information about what the family's been through, Trauma, traumatic it was to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and you know me, Paul, I think you, you'll go back yourself, um, you'll know the way I work, you know the way I, I try and work around people and, and, and befriend people and try and make something out of it. And I, uh, one thing for sure, I, I'll, I'd like to keep my promise. Anyway, going back, we sat in the office and um, we done a plan about Emily, who was, I was informed that Evie and Emily suffered with cerebral palsy, um, which is hard two sisters in one family. One, what, just one person, never mind, she's uh, not. I know, I know. And the mum was fighting cervical cancer as well, so it, it touched me on the story. So we started making a list, I started putting everything down, 
And this is what we're going to do to fundraise. I'm going to help out. And obviously, the young girl herself, she was amazed at what we were going to try and do. And, you know, this, I said, this is a future plan. And we only had a certain amount of time to do it. We've only got 18 months to do this. So we sat down and in my head, 18 months wasn't long Not for our friends. It's on you before you know it. But 18 months to me, I feel confident that it's a long time for me because I rope in and I pull in all my contacts that I haven't used before, that I've, I've gained over 40 years in grassroots football. I've got fantastic friends in grassroots football. Um, I, I keep them, you know, because the friendship, basically, the person, it dwindled away. Maybe it was my fault. I really, really don't know. But at the end of the day, I had this plan, and because I kept a promise, I did not want to let this person down. Not the person in the friendship, the person that I promised, the person in the friendship, about a sister to get her through pain free. And thankfully, I sent an email um, not so long ago to to my mum to see, because she was aware of it, to see if she still wanted some support to help Emily out. And I was, I was ecstatic to say the least when the email come back thanking me. And I understand that people who are trying to raise funding to get someone an operation, it's hard, especially in the times that we're going through. Yeah. It really is. You, you find a lot of people don't like to bother people. They'd, they'd rather no. just get on with it themselves and suffer and by suffering. Well, not yeah. long moving from Wales, they do really not yeah. know that many yeah. people to help them yeah. out. So it's, it's, I know Wales isn't that far, but it's, it is a bit of a jump. It's a jump. Because you know, you're going from your friends and family on the left side of the town, and you're moving to the right hand side of the town, and you don't know no one. Mm. Basically, you know what I mean? It's just... Well, it is. And, and do you know what? I, I'm over the moon that I was accepted to help raise funds. Tell them to take a back seat. They can get involved if they want to. You know, we're not stopping this. It's a family day. What, whatever we're doing, we, we've got big plans. You know yourself, you've seen the plans. Yeah. We've got big plans to do and help to raise... Little things. Well, £25,000 is a lot of money for an operation. But we can do this. We really can do it. We're confident now it's growing. We've got 18 months to do it, but you asked me how we come about. Yeah. On that list, we had all kinds of functions, what we could do, what we could plan, what we could get together, <clears throat> how we could all work together and do it. But a run was never there. A run was never on that piece of paper. I don't know where it come from, Paul. I was thinking, what can I do to quickly raise money and help us out? Because with the functions, with lockdown approaching, we couldn't really book holes, yeah, book this, yeah, yeah, do yeah. climbs, do head, parachute jumps. These are all the plans that I was trying to plan. Anyway, I thought the other day, put it to yourself, you jump straight on board. Honestly, absolutely amazing. The team that I, I mentioned it to you about uh, doing a run from Warrington Town Hall to Liverpool Town, Town Hall, and made, mapped the route out to 26 miles was a marathon. No, you, exactly 26 points. Two. two miles, yes. Yes, which we are doing. So that point two, that makes a hell of a difference, so, believe me. Does it? Oh, yes. Didn't want to hear that. Anyway, that's how the plan come about, but not the run. And I just thought, something now that we can do, you can do exercise, and if it's still on yeah, yeah. in February, February the 7th, 8, 8 a.m., if anyone wants to turn out to Wellington Town Hall, see us off, or at God knows what time we're going to finish, but we'll have a plan, we'll give you... All the updates, we'll let you know. Liverpool Town Hall, we're expecting pretty uh, a lot of people there. Hopefully it's all back social distance. The people who are getting in touch with me uh, yeah. and, and the fundraiser. Well, roughly, as you say, on the day, or day about on the day, we'll have a timeline, roughly where we should be at certain times. Mm. Maybe if people want to come out and support us on the road, hopefully at the five mile mark, the ten mile mark, the fifteen. You know, yeah, things like we're making plans yeah, out yeah, yeah, for yeah. everyone because yeah. there's a lot of people who said they can't do the full twenty six mile. I don't know that I can, but they said they'd like to join in at a certain point. That'd be fantastic if they can donate and join in at a certain point. Then we'll know. It'd exactly. be nice if, as you say, we're actually going to go to the football ground, aren't we? Not Liverpool or Everton. The actual, mm, no, the that could be in the route at the moment. Oh, it could yeah. be around the two grounds. Yeah. yeah. So with the actual playing field where. Really. Jeffrey Umbrell. Jeffrey Umbrell. Yeah. What would be advisable due to the number of people that want to come out and support is meet there. If you guys want to run some part of this race or walk or whatever you want to do, 
join us there. On it's the good, on yeah, the probably a good idea because we're going around the pitch and our pocket collectors are going around all the, the players, the teams, the, the supporters, the parents to, to help us on our way to, to raise this £25,000. We're, we're, we're doing different routes and we'll let you know. We can't obviously advertise the route yet because they're still working on it because the nooks and crannies, we'd love to go down the motorway, that would be the easiest thing in the world, but unfortunately we can't, you need permission, you need, you know, the real flashing blue lights chasing us, we've run faster than what we intended to do anyway, so yeah. we can't do that, we'd love to. But going back to friendship, Paul, you know, you, you know the way you're working in friendship, you, uh, we lost track ourselves, lost touch uh, a good while ago, um, just tell, you, you know, Oh, it was, well, it's, as you say, life's life, isn't it? It, it? Things happen in life, maybe for a reason, not at the time, we don't know. But, yeah, we just lost contact. I don't know what, why, how we lost contact, I don't know what it was. But, um, I always kept looking on the website, so things like that. Um, how you were getting on, how things were going, what was happening, if, whether you were still doing it. Um, things like that, you know how, how it was progressing, and, and yeah, I was glad I uh, met you. And then, kind of so. yeah, oh. for, yeah, for some reason, I was flicking through LinkedIn, 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 is it or whatever? I um, come across you, and just thought, well, not invented, not gained. Sent you the message, and that's a, that 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 was history. We're back. Just just to make sure that his mic's on. <laughs> it's, it's one of those shows, you know what I mean? It's a pre-recorded yeah. show. But um, sorry about me back there, viewers. Um, sorry about, well, they wouldn't have known they're on the podcast, would they? No. But at the end of the day, I think what it is, what you pick up on mine, because they're, they're powerful mics, so we should be okay. But definitely picked up on the camera. That was only for the podcast. But as you say, Paul, we did. Um, you know me. And I can't thank you enough for coming back because your commitment is second to none. It really is. You had everything. You, you really baffled me when you come back and you had a collection of everything that we'd done together. Yeah, yeah. That was memories to me. They touched me a little bit. It was really upsetting. And if this programme is probably going to be a little bit of an emotional tonight because we'll touch where we're going to read out everyone who's donated at the moment because it is hard in these times for anyone to donate. You know, friendship is a massive, massive thing. People working together, people coming together, people donating together. I'm just flabbergasted and I told you the story the other day tonight Paul we haven't been long in the studio yeah um, in the office and I decided to get to know people only through reception now you've met Joe and Sheila the lovely lovely people are oh, they're, they're fantastic so I went down with a little bit of a sponsor for them I said listen girls could you do me a massive favor straight away yeah what is it man what is it they love the bones of me and they're fantastic and I showed them the sponsor for them and they went no, no, we'll introduce you. Let, let, let us take you around to these businesses and the studio. And I went, oh, okay. We so they knocked on the No, oh, I didn't know what to know. expect. I didn't know what, I'd been in the businesses. Anyway, we, or right, I, knocked on one of the doors and, and Joe, Sheila Shelley, sorry, turned around and went, here's John there, just go and have a little chat to him. And when I walked in, everyone turned, there must be more 30 people there. And I looked and went, oh, Who's John? Yeah, that's me. And I went, John, can I just have a little word to you? Yeah, not a problem. Come over to me. And I told him the story, and he went, right. He said, this is John, JNC Marketing. I, first time I met them, and obviously he was calling me by my name straight away. Everyone was, hello there. And it was sort of, stop everything, everyone. This man wants to talk to you. This man needs to tell you something. And I locked him and I went, oh, right, so I'm making a speech here. <laughs> anyway, I did, I started talking then, and when I got something, Paul, you know when I make oh, a speech, yeah, that's yeah, it, you know, yeah. everything comes together. I was talking about Emily, and I was telling the situation, what Emily needs, the operation for. Emily needs it pain-free, and I explained what mum had been through, cervical cancer, what Evie had been through as well, and cerebral palsy. To me, it, it's touching to me, and it still is, because a family suffering right the way through, I want to do something about it. And I put that message across to JNC Marketing. And before I'd even finished it, John said, can I just say something? Turned around and went, yeah. He went, I'll put £500 in. Wow. I, I'm stuck for words. And they all decided, we want to get involved. Can we go? Have you got any more forms? Can we start fundraising? Can we come on the run with you? I'll walk. I'll... 
And there was one girl there, February the 7th, that's when the run is, who said, that's my birthday, but I've got something to look forward to now. And I was, I, I was just taken aback, yeah. shocked, and then I went into the next one, and they'd done exactly the same. They're going to get involved with us in fundraising, and, and to me, essential, they were, that's their business. They're going to get in touch with us, and... Oh, like a job place. I, I, come, yeah, yeah. I come up to the office and I had to write a lovely post about what I'd experienced because people are going through terrible times facing lockdown, facing furlough f again. I'm, I'm shocked and people losing their jobs yeah. and yet people want to stand back, look at you and say, do you know what, can I put a few quid in there? Well, I was looking forward to going back Monday and I just hate furlough. So I'm furlough till the end of the month for the time being. And I'm going to be on my lonesome. Again. Do you and me, Paul, we've had this recorded show. We're facing lockdown. I've got to come in and I want to do the show and I really personally will do a show. And I want you, the viewers, the listeners, to get involved with us. Please send in your message. Please send us in anything we want to talk about. Talk about. I'll do it. Paul will do that. We can just send in emails. We haven't got the, yeah. the equipment to like to Zoom, things like that. We haven't got our editor who can do it for us. You know, at the moment, that would be coming. It's going to be coming in a later time. But the main objective for us is to train. You're training. I'm training. Um, I'll be training right the way through. I finish on Sunday evening because that was my three weeks pattern. That was my plan. Then I'm going to go into twice a week party. You agree with me what I should do on the run. Yeah. But before I go into more details about running and what we need and what we think we need, I just want to mention every single person who's donated. You told me, look, in a couple of days, and that's all it's been, we've raised 1,087 of the 24, £25,000 that's required. And we want to give some people a break. We don't want to batter it and batter it and batter it because people are aware that I'm doing a run, a 26-mile run, fingers crossed, I do it, I finish it. I need to finish it, not just for myself, but for, Emily, yeah, for the yeah, promises yeah. that yeah. I carried out, yeah. the friendship. That's all I want to try and do, and that's all I want to... That's, that's why I've been going in for over 40 years in grassroots football. That's why I started to, to support people, to help people in referees, basically, mainly referees to do what they're doing to, to develop their skills, if they can, the kids to develop their skills. And that needs a lot of hard work from the touchlines because we need to, get, to talk to our parents, spectators, managers on the touchlines to leave those referees alone, let the kids play, let the referees develop their skills as well because they want to go further and that's why I wanted to get involved and a promise from me is a promise and I could not break this promise. I wanted to do something, I'm going to do something, the likes of the PFA coming in to sponsor me with night gear. I can't believe what they're doing, I can't thank me enough. I've had messages from Liverpool Football Club, I'm waiting for Everton Football Club to come and touch me. I've had messages from the FA, all the government bodies that I'm working with, but John Hudson and the PFA have just been outstanding and I can't <coughs> thank John. <coughs> excuse me, enough for the people, for the people who are rallying round, helping us, the likes of Team DXTL, the people who are just wanting to support the idea that I've had to try and raise this, you know, and, and we can't wait to the end of it, and I can't wait to give a lovely big fat check over to the family to help them out and give them the stress-free life that they're all looking for, especially Emily as a child. Yeah. We know there's yeah. a million and one cases out there that we could take on, but this was something that touched me when I heard the story, when I met the person who was involved with us at the time, it touched me and it stayed with me and I always promised I want to do something about it. I'm not going to let anything walk well, away. Well, it's like the post I put out, isn't it? I think it was on your wall. You know, like, come on, we are we are Liverpool. You know, we are Liverpool and it's not just because we are from it. It's Liverpool as a city always pulled together. They're not, they're in, any, in anything, whether it's a charity... Can I, can I just say something from you there? I did mention there the other day that was there, that the family's from Wales and we've settled down, or trying to settle down in Liverpool, and I think they have at the moment, and they'll settle down even more when we, we raise yeah, this yeah, yeah. money. But the person I talked to in the bank account, um, the Halifax, where the, the money's going to be transferred to until we can actually put that over to the family, he was taken back, he, he'd listened to the story, I told him the story, and lo and behold, he was from Wales, <laughs> and he couldn't thank me enough. He, enough. he said, I love Liverpool, I love, I'm a Beatles fan, I love coming over to Liverpool, I've been coming over for 20 odd years, and I love the people, the, the way they are together, the way they bring themselves together. He said, it's not just about the fact ball. this is about Liverpool people to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He said, exactly. because I've had a warm 
feeling of every single person. He said, they're so friendly. And, you know, okay, we all know that we have people who are not so friendly. We're not, you know, we just don't want to mention those people. But when you do something like this, this means a lot to me. It means a lot to the family. It means a lot to you. And yeah, if we yeah. can complete this, my God, you know, the likes of Tilly's cakes there, we're going to have a massive cake. I'm going to jump out of that cake. <laughs> not going to eat it. I'm just going to jump out of it and just make sure that everyone is, is known what they've done and thank every single person. Yeah. But I want to start by thanking the people that, who, who have helped us out. Which is, you've heard about JNC Marketing, what they've done, the people who want to get involved. Paul Lee, who's a nephew of mine, shocked me, put, well, I won't tell Paul, he's just going to keep donating. And also, all the DSTL team, ourselves, we wouldn't ask you to do anything that we wouldn't do. We've donated ourselves. Um, even the mum, Donna, I, I had a little no, bit of was expecting. You know, no, 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 no. We, we promised to do this, and we don't want the family putting out of their pockets into this. If we wanted a couple of quid at the end of it, I'm sure these people, the so good people, <laughs> and it's not just Merseyside, you know, I've had donations from out, outside. Nathan from Sheffield, thank you very much, yeah. working for the FA now. First on GoFundMe, donating. Fantastic. These people are just magical, and I can't thank them enough, but we're back on. Donate, donate, and... Um, as I say, Donna there, we had Craig, Craig Walsh who's donated, David Drummond who's donated, Dan Lunt who's donated, Victoria Mullen who's donated, Graham Biggs, Chris Keelan, Michael Buck, or Michelle no, Buck, Michelle Buck, say, yeah, Michelle yeah. Buck, Jane, Jane Farr, is that yeah, John? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And John, John Andrews. John Andrews. Mark Owen. And Mark it's Owen. It's not Mark Owen from Take That, by the way. Well, then again, it might be, you don't know. <laughs> we do not know. Mark Scanlon. Ruth Elton. John Houghton. Global Maintenance, I've got a maintenance man. Yeah. Thank you very much, Global Ma Maintenance Day. Right next door to us. They're the Pitch Boys, aren't they? They're the Pitch Boys, they're the ones who are working closely with us. You're going to hear a lot about them. And as you say, you've mentioned... I've made, mentioned Nathan, yeah. yeah. You know, and I can't thank you all enough. And this is what we're going to do. On our show every Friday, we're going to give you updates about what we're doing for Emily, how we're doing it, what we've raised. We just need more and more money raising. We want people to go on GoFundMe. We want people to get involved with us want people to just click on the link and just put as much as they can in. If we had 25,000 people put the pound in, successful, we've done it. Now that sounds like the FA's ringing you there. Yeah, <laughs> these are donations for so long. I've got to ignore that at the moment. This is more money. This is what's been like my phone, my email and social media. And I can't thank you all enough. I think you're absolutely wonderful. My heart goes out to you. You know what we're doing. The story behind that is just to try and make sure that we can get as much money as we possibly yeah, yeah. can. And if we make anything else of that, it's a massive bonus. But we've decided that Team DXTL, when the funding comes in, we will not take a penny, we'll donate ourselves. We won't give up until we've raised that £25,000. We have 18 months to do that, Paul. 18 months to do it. Well, and going we've by what we've had in a couple of days. We're over a thousand pounds already. Oh, don't forget, I, I did know folks, go for me and, and use oh, this yeah, page. Yeah, that, yeah. yeah, they take a percentage out of it. I just thought they left it in. I'm sorry, sorry, sorry. We'll give you the percentages that they take out right the way through on this £25,000. So, really, we're doing our work for go for me as well. <laughs> so, that was a little bit of a headache to me because we know we have to raise a little bit more, but I think you all understand the way GoFundMe works. If you don't read up on it, I didn't. I, I just thought, let's get this money in. Let's get this £25,000 in. It's going to be magical. Let's do it. Let's start off. But just to let you know, we'll be everything. We don't want cash if we can help it. We want it all to go through our account, our GoFundMe account, because we all know what happens. And here's a lot of managers out there as well saying, oh, I get accused of subs collecting too much. We don't want that. We just want your cash on board. Well, also, if any businesses are watching this, um, or listening even, donate, maybe, I don't know, wherever your company is, or donate a hamper or anything like that, we'll raffle it off. Like, any, the, anything, like, yeah. like the Liverpool, like um, the James Miller shirt that I've been getting, the, he's agreed Fo to do that. You footballs, know, the EFA, Liverpool Football Club, everything, everything we're going to have a collection, and we're going to have a massive auction, or a massive ra raffle. We might even we might even raffle Mal's running kit. Now come on. There you go, and I'll sign it for you as well. Then. <laughs> what with sweat? It's all like <laughs> it's all like it's coming, and I'm going to show you it when it comes. And I can't thank the PFA enough for doing that. We, one call taxis. Got to give them a mention, Paul, because they're behind the scenes. They're doing a lot for us as well. You well, know. So speaking we'll of one know. call, um, 
I think they sponsored one of the local teams, don't they? That's playing in the FA Cup this weekend. Scam United, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think they're. I think they're on BT Sport at the weekend. Good luck to Scam, and I'm sure Scam will do something for us. And if they keep going through in the FA Cup, wow, what can they do? Is I'm watching that Chris O'Sullivan, top man. You know what to do there, mate. You get us a nice mention. I'll be over the moon. I'll be ecstatic. But you are doing brilliant work behind the scenes. And do you know what was good about Chris? You rung me up. And he said, I want to run this by before I do anything. And that's a good thing about it. If everyone can run things by us, if you want to get involved, before we can say yet, yeah, nay to it, you can understand we don't want every cross and bat taken over. We need to know everything that's going on so we can combat around that and tell our viewers, tell our listeners exactly how we're raising funds, what we're doing. Yeah. Do you know what? And I can't thank you enough. It really is. And it, it, it'll always be an emotional show because of what we're doing on a Friday evening, what we're trying to raise, and it's going to be emotional because we're facing lockdown, and I'm going on my own lonesome, so I'd love all your messages. Well, not just that, man, it's the, it's the first update since we started this. Yes, it is, yeah, you're right. And, and, I think to, have, and to have that kind of amount on the first update, it's, well, it's phenomenal. I, I, I'm, I'm proud of not just myself, the team, and uh, I'm proud of everyone who's donated. Keep the donations coming in, please. The link would be on the website. Just go. On, if you're looking at GoFundMe, I run Team DXTL, I run for Emily. Team DXTL, I run for Emily. You'll find it on there. You don't really need the link. GoFundMe will have it on there. You can read all about it. And this video will be on there as well because we want to update a video every single week. We want to keep it updated and we want to keep you interested and we want to keep you donating. And that's all we ask. If you can do that for us, help us out, help us raise this 25,000. 24,000 now, less than that. Do you know what? Ecstatic. We'll be over the moon and we'll give you a mention as well on DXTL TV and the podcast. What more can we say, Paul? I appreciate you coming in. I'm sorry that you're not going to be here for oh, a month or so. We'll, now. Have, to, we'll have to do a um, video call. <laughs> I think, I don't know what, with any ideas, please, folks, just get it into me. But as I say, a little bit of an emotional show yeah, little, yeah, you know, yeah. because I'm saying farewell to Paul for four weeks. I'll be on my own again. I don't want people to get bored. I've got a great face for radio. I do know that. Everyone tells me. And also, can I just say, to listen now for an interview that we've done um, with George Sefton. 50 years of the man, wasn't it? 50 years. The, the voice of Anfield. 50 years with George. What an interview. Watch out for that one. We've put that on YouTube. Just getting all edited. No one's what, I assure you. And we want to thank Cottonfields Productions, who are going to be filming the run on the weekend. We can't, do you know what, we're giving mentions to each and every one year. We've got an extended show tonight. We'll have an extended show every Friday night because now lockdown's on. You know, I'm, I'm sure we'll get more viewers, Paul. And oh, I'm sorry to say, well, within this four weeks, obviously we will be updating the situation, what's going on with the, um, the, 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 um, the fund. But not just that, we'll also hopefully have other information for the night as well, for the show. There you go. So it's worth tuning in. We'll be back again, or I'll be back again tomorrow evening at 7pm. Talk some grassroots football, and if there's any more updates, I'll certainly give you that. And Sunday, 7pm, on my own. So in the meantime, thank you very, very much to Paul Rukin, who's been one of our guests, and I hope you've enjoyed him over the last couple of weeks. He'll be back in four weeks' time. We'll be raring to go, and we'll have, hopefully, this lockdown will be all over. But in the meantime, I'll see you tomorrow at 7pm. So for myself, Mal Lee, and all the team here that the Don't Cross the Line, Respect Campaign, Paul Ludkin, alias The Rudd. Have a great evening. Put your feet up, relax, but most of all, please be stay safe, safe yeah. and fundraise for Emily, if you don't mind. Thank you very much indeed for taking part. Thank you.